see this going, but it's up to you, of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, first of all, if we're going to continue working together, I want to work with a woman sales representative because I don't want to have to see locker room talk about myself when you're sharing screens. So if we're going to move forward, I would like to work with a account rep that's maybe a woman in the area so that we can move forward that way. I know that was a mistake, but I, I don't want to no, see that's, that's like, inexcusable yeah, I, I just don't want to see like locker room talk about myself. So yes. if we could, no. I like the product. I know it's good. I know it's tried and true, but I just want to work with a woman like moving forward, if possible. <laughs> well, uh, yep, we have a couple of really good RSMs actually that you'll be able to work with. So okay. 100% completely understand, and that's inexcusable. Um, regardless of when it was a mistake sharing the screen, it should be talked about. So apologies on yep. that. Uh, a normal professional exchange uh, for Whitney Sharp there, who's a vice president of an unnamed here. She posted recruiting and staffing sales company. She's working apparently with a group of men on a Zoom call, and one of them shared their group texts or at least messages about what they thought of her, and uh, she wanted none of it. And it's a shame that locker room talk is the term for that now because we got it from our former president. Still, uh, here's the details of what went down though. So uh, when a vendor accidentally shared uh, his group team's chat, it's all nasty things about me is what she said. It's 2023, can this stop? That's what she put at the top of that video. And according to Sharp, this incident took place on January 24th during a work video call with potential clients. And she spoke with today and she said that as a vice president of her company, part of her role involves assessing different vendors that can enhance her business development teams. Apparently they were still pretty impressive because she said she wants to work with them still, despite all this as long as she can work with a woman. But she did give more details of how this whole thing went down and how they reacted uh, to that situation. Let's watch. I got a call from that VP of sales this morning, not because he saw all of these TikToks. He actually had no idea that these were going on. He called me to do damage control, basically to save the sale. He wanted to make sure that I'm still in their good graces so that I would continue the sales cycle and in the end buy the product from them. I got a lot of comments that said drop the vendor. Well, they actually, I phrased that wrong. They're not currently a vendor of us yet. I was evaluating them to become one of our vendors. That will no longer be happening. I cannot work with a vendor and my company will not support a vendor that does not support women in business. It's just not going to happen. Um, his apology basically just reiterated the entire email he sent to me. It was not genuine. The only thing concrete he said he's going to do to take action is talk to HR this afternoon. He should have spoken to HR the second he heard about There's no reason uh, to speak to them right away, right? She got cut off, let's let her finish. I got cut off, but he should have went to HR the second he heard about this yesterday at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. That's the real problem there is that this isn't high enough up on their priority list. This isn't high enough on their priority list. They don't deserve to have a business. They don't deserve to employ any woman anywhere in the world. I just really can't believe their response and reaction that this company has given me. And it's clear they probably don't have daughters Maybe they don't have sisters. Maybe they just don't respect women in general, but no one deserves to do business with this vendor. And I'm definitely teetering back and forth with, do I say who the vendor is? Do I not say who the vendor is? I, I do want to have some sort of mutual respect for some reason still between the two of us. I, I don't know why I care, but it's a lot. So I'll be continuing to post more videos since this has sparked some really important conversations. So just uh, damage control versus change of course, I guess is the way that we're going about this. Yeah, it's just gross how often women have to deal with stuff like this. Uh, happens all the time, you know, now I work in whatever content creation and doing this and stuff like this, but I used to have like a regular salary nine to five job working in data science and tech. And it's so difficult being in a field that is so dominated by men. You feel like you can't even speak up in situations like this. So it's honestly great that she did and said something about it. But when it's a field that's so dominated by men, you don't say things when you know there are microaggressions because you don't feel like you'll be heard, you don't feel like it'll be corrected, which of course is something she's dealing with. But also uh, even in this industry, like the only reason I'm not signed with like a, a manager, because typically you have someone who helps you know with your bookings and whatever stuff, if you do entertainment, if you do content creation, 
every single time there's been a negotiation, it's turned into creepiness and like, let's go to dinner. And this is so common in the entertainment industry. It just sucks that like women cannot just just do their their job and their business without being objectified. Every, uh, I guess every interaction is an opportunity to say and do whatever you can to get yourself ahead there. One thing I'll disagree with uh, uh, the uh, woman there in that, uh, what's her name, uh, Whitney. She goes, maybe they don't have daughters or wives or uh, you know aunts, nieces. They do. It's separate for them. If somebody did that to their family, it'd be a problem. 